Oh, come on, answer your phone, man. Come on, really? Please answer your phone. Cannot believe. I gotta find somebody to fix some cast iron, man. You know? I think I'll go get a hold of my old buddy, Gary Wilson. He's the walking encyclopedia of old time cool stuff. Let's go see him. I think he's sitting in here in my weld shop at Cali College. Might have to go consult, you know? I messed up, broke a piece of old time cast iron. And I know he's got some tricks. Get me in trouble. I come up here and see my old buddy Gary Wilson. Uh, How you doing, old buddy? When I say old, man, we are getting old, aren't we? We are old. Man, I, I messed up and I broke a piece of cast and I'm, I'm just yeah. a little bit nervous about it. I did clean it off with a bead blaster, but I did not grind it because I knew you wanted to have the grain to kind of fit it up. Yeah, we need to take a look and just see what we can do with this. Of course, if you can't fix it, you can't cultivate, you know. That's right. And hey, one thing I didn't do is attempt it before I give it to you. That's what a lot of people do to me. They, they try to cobble that's, it all up and they true. bring it and say, here, and can I you want fix you to, that? I, I charge, you to, I charge them double at least. I really appreciate that, you know, because it just makes my job easier. It does. Even though it's probably not going to be easy, I'll do what I can. But, true. you know, there's a lot of folks I'm sure that know you none of them know me but over the years Bob has always told me that hey, I'll take care of you Gary it's not a problem whatever it is <laughs> and I want you all out there to notice he fixed me up with these gloves about 10 years ago man and, and you know I just figure one of these days when I'm welding with my bare fingers that he, he might get me another get set of gloves. I'll but, buy you roll of duct tape you know, after a while. See? Oh, I'll get you another pair. You're just a fine fella. <laughs> well, let's do a little prep on this before we start. Uh, I need the dot co and an airline. If need some air? One. Yes, sir. Okay. We're, I'll find that. <clears throat> we're gonna take and bevel this just a little bit clean it just a little more and then it will take a few minutes to get it lined up like we need to have it and a lot of folks do cast iron in different ways some use nickel and a stick machine some will take a torch and brace it with with brass we're going to attempt a couple of fixes that actually one of them goes back quite a ways we're going to attempt to weld this with cast iron rod, which is simply <clears throat> a piece of cast iron. It's about a quarter of an inch square, and uh, you have to run it pretty hot, but this is one way. And there's another way. We have a rod. I don't really know exactly what the designation is. Uh, I call it certanium. Just date back to the flag tag days. Yes, it's an old piece. The old flag tag gone and, there, old uh, man. But it likes cast iron. It doesn't require as much heat as using the, the square cast iron rod. This requires a lot of heat. And it's almost like pushing mud around. But it is one way to repair cast iron with cast iron. And I know a lot of guys that have done, well, let's say antique restoration. If you break an ear off of a cylinder, like on a motorcycle or on one of the old cars, you can put it back on with this and work on it a little bit and you don't have a discoloration because you're actually making the repair was the same thing that it's originally made from. So uh, do those two require different fluxes? I mean, the cast iron, does that have a kind of a unique? It has uh, a unique flux, and I hope this is good. We got it at the welding shop, and it's anti-borax welding flux number one, cast iron welding compound. 
is what it is. I haven't seen that. And the old can's pretty old, so Forever. it's been there for a while. The other does not require any flux. And it's just, it's pretty nice. I repaired a ear on a Model T head with this stuff. When I got finished with it, once we ground it down and kind of aged it a little bit, you couldn't tell the difference once we painted it. But That's interesting. It's just old rod. So we'll take this and... and I get that torch out of your way. Yeah, I don't use a face shield at this point because I can't well, wear one without my glasses, but you should, should use eye protection. <laughs> so we'll put a slight bevel on this to begin with. You see kind of what we have done. Now I'll bevel the other piece slightly and then we'll your, continue. Uh, your spark trail off of there uh, indicates a lot of carbon. It's short. <laughs> So we'll give it a try. What uh, you're going to go after this with a number one, number two? I'm going to start with a <clears throat> with a number two. Okay. We'll do a little preheat on it. I'll see if I can get it tacked in place using the certanium. Okay. And then we'll go from there. Got the striker over there. Uh, there was one. You must have taken it when I wasn't looking. I'll put on my you, uh, real fine gloves here. You're killing me. Well, I'm hoping I get a new pair of gloves out of this deal. I'm hoping you, you do know too. how it is. All right. There we go. You're making me feel bad, you know what? I am? Yeah. Well, I hope so. That's what I'm trying to do. We'll get our flame back where it should be. A neutral flame. Yes. So we'll put a little preheat to it and then we'll see what we can do here. You know, I think I'm going to get my uh, my dark goggles on. I want to watch the pool flow. Well, there won't be one for a little bit while I do preheat. On larger castings, you really need to do a good preheat in order to try to spread it out evenly. This is not as susceptible, but uh, uh, on a larger casting, you really need to be careful and do a real good preheat. And then one of the things that we used to do and has still been done over time is we used to take and bury it. Uh, we buried it in sand, we buried it in dirt. One of the things that uh, I've used over the years is, uh, it looks like kitty litter, it's oil dry. Okay. And we used to have a, a barrel full of the stuff 
and we just pour about half the barrel out, drop the welded piece of cast iron into it, and then cover it up with what what we had left. And uh, that way it holds the heat, it allows it to cool down slowly, which kind of helps control the expansion of the cast iron, and it kind of helps keep it from cracking. So we'll see if we can get a spot. As you can see, that stuff flows on there quite well. Uh, yes, it does. Quite well. I see the haze. That's likely. Ordinarily, I wouldn't have done it this way, but uh, since I'm doing slightly. You got it slightly. It's there. Oh, it is? Yeah. Since I'm doing two different types of weld here, I will preheat the rod and we'll see if we can get this. This won't weld as nice, but it will, it will weld. I've heard you talk about this, but I have not seen it. I'm just going to be interested. Well, it's kind of tough. Basically on thinner things. Oh wow, yeah, I think it's the same when you say it's like pushing mud. That's just a massive material, but it looks like it comes off controllable on the end. It does. And you can, uh, unless you have too much torque, move it around. But you can move it around with the torque once it's on there. You can actually see it flow. So, anti, anti bore And I might say we are in a well ventilated area. And when you're welding with this type of rod and this type of fluff, you need to have a well ventilated area. It's really hot. It has to be that way in order to actually, excuse me, in order to actually make it flow. Now, let's turn the part over. I'm just having an off time here. All right. Uh, do we need to do a wire bump on that? I need a rock. Yeah. No, sir. Because uh, we've already oh, got a flux out on the part. Yep. So we'll go again. I started my career, uh, the first thing we did was oxyacetylene. Yeah. Oxyacetylene welding. And a lot of aircraft in those days. With oxyacetylene. Now then. We want to go back over to the other side. I think we've got the other side, don't we? Uh, now we have a... Oh, on this one? Yeah. Yeah, I'm talking about well, the other that. side we're doing with a different one. Right. Right. Okay, we just will do that one. All we got it up where we can get at it. We don't have a lot of well material. Lean this over towards me a little bit. We don't have a lot of, of extra well material on it. So it. Uh, it can be ground down or it can be left as is. That's your choice. Okay, standard back up and off. Top side here.
pretty nice beat. For what we're trying to repair. Yeah. Let's look on the back side, Bob, if you would. I think we've got it. Uh, I think you do too. I believe we're good. Nice and now, done. gentlemen, and then we and would, ladies, uh, is how you repair cast iron kind of the old fashioned way. We like old fashioned. We'll let that cool and then we can brush it off and have a look at it. In fact, it's probably we can brush a little of it now. I don't know why you got to throw the air hose on the floor to well, pick it up like that. Well, there's no, 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 nothing here to see. It would have been. On the ball, you understand it that held that there. until that, I called for it. See that know? thing I made over there? This here thing? Yeah, you can wrap the air hose around that. Really? Yeah. Well, isn't that special? Who knows what that was? Smell like old yeah. cast iron. That kind of lets you see what the weld actually looks like. And I'll take this and we'll grind some of the cast iron off. Basically, the repair is made. If you took and did a finish grind on this I could fire up the torch and add just a little more right there if I ground deeper I would get through it but so that's basically how it's done and if these were in a an area where they were going to be heated again that would probably show some color differentiation that would but not would it I mean it blend in pretty good probably this would blend in pretty good very nice this would have a little color uh, deviation or variation to it but cast iron is used exhaust manifolds uh, farm equipment a lot of different things like that and it's it's always rough and exhaust manifolds are especially hard to weld because they get what we call burned out yeah they're just some cut, of them no cut. matter what you do to them you can't weld them but I have found that either using the square rod or the zirconium, you're able to weld them over using nickel and an arc welder because what it will do is it will just dig out in the material. It, it just doesn't seem to want, it's almost like trying to weld something that's porous everywhere. And you can take this because you can run zirconium at a lower heat and be able to have it flow out onto it, but you have to grind it clean. And as far as the cast iron rod, you can put as much heat to it as, I mean, you have to, because you, you get it into a molten state and push it. But most of this stuff was rough to begin with. Some of it's made not as pure, as you would like it to be made. That had a so, large grain structure. Yes. Broke. I mean, so you need something as close to what your base metal is if you're going to make a repair like that. Interesting. This rod is still available, and there are different versions of certanium. Uh, we talked a little, a uh, little bit a while ago. You can, you can use uh, silicon bronze. That's a way to do it, but. A lot of people, when they get cast iron in front of them, they really don't understand what it takes to weld it. And it's, it's an old technique, and it's been developed by many different people over the years. But this, as far as I'm concerned, I'm 71 years old. I've been welding all my life. Some of the guys that, that did uh, blacksmithing, are 
the guys that taught me how to do this. And a lot of times it won't be pretty and it won't be perfect, but it is a way to repair it. If I bead blasted this and cleaned it up, it'd be fine, wouldn't it? Sure. You gave me this a long time ago. I just never got around sure. to using it. I've been, I didn't have, you know, we talked about this a while back, and then I just all of a sudden didn't have any repairs to do. I will show you this. It's very brittle. Yes, it is. It's just like cast iron. And That's the nature of cast. Nothing else, nothing else involved in it. Uh, you know, some, some rods are made out of different composites. This is simply cast iron is what it is. So when you're making a repair like we did here using this, you're repairing the base metal with basically what it's made out of. Interesting. Thank you. I appreciate your time. You're quite welcome. Uh, you might want to put the top on your can over there and, so it doesn't uh, get oxidized. Can I go take my nap now? Is it past oh, your nap time? Well, gee whiz. Look at there, folks. I shamed him. It was well I worth it. I birded you up everything and then you <laughs> got to shame me like that. I can't believe it. You know? It was well worth it. Well, I mean, you know, look at that. I have to tell everybody you gave me these gloves and I, you know. I don't remember what year that was. It's been about hey. 10 ago. I sure learned a lot. I always learned a wealth of stuff yeah. off the guys walking the encyclopedia on the old cool stuff. Uh, Sometimes you just have to do it the old way. That's correct. Yeah. We appreciate your support. Hit the subscribe button. There's going to be some new and cool stuff coming along. It might be old and cool stuff. You never know. Well, the nice thing about this is it gives folks the opportunity to see how things were done and how things can be done and it just might save you in a pinch. I do a lot of automobile restoration and things like that so I've been presented with different ways of repairing things. Now if I wanted this to look just like it is here I'd get it all ground down nice Put a couple coats of paint on it, throw a handful of dirt on it, let it dry, blow it off, and then paint it again. It looks just like the original piece. Interesting. So appreciate you, old bud. No problem. Thank you very much. You bet. Thank you. Glad to help. Into the play with detectives. Yeah. I know enough to get me in trouble.